It's no secret that archaeologists have unearthed countless treasures over the years, from ancient cities to priceless artifacts. But it seems that their latest discovery has truly taken the world by storm. Hello guys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see how a team of researchers recently set out to excavate a Californian sand dune, and they were stunned to discover a priceless artifact buried beneath the sandy soil. What could possibly be so precious and remarkable about this mysterious relic? One thing is for sure, you won't want to miss finding out. Check out this exciting YouTube video for all the details of this incredible archaeological find. The central coast of California's changing red dunes are now revealing their last secrets after almost a century. A virtually complete Egyptian sphinx was discovered and removed from the dunes of Guadalupe, California over the course of 10 days in November by researchers using shovels, horsehair brushes, and tons of quickly solidifying foam. However, the Cali Sphinx is made of plaster as opposed to the North African limestone that gives the Great Sphinx of Giza its shape. It is also not even close to being as old as its Egyptian counterpart. The Guadalupe Sphinx is perhaps the final remaining piece of a massive film set that renowned filmmaker Cecil B. DeMille built here in 1923 for his silent black and white film, The Ten Commandments. Hundreds of performers and extras carried out biblical events on one of the biggest movie sets ever constructed at the time, which included a pharaoh's entrance that was 12 stories tall and 720 feet long, along with 21 sphinxes arranged along a perpendicular hallway. Six archaeologists and restoration specialists worked from sunrise to nightfall, taking great care not to trample on any of the unusual plants that thrive here since they are federally protected. The dunes have been protected since the 1970s due to these flora and the western snowy plover, a tiny, environmentally endangered bird that also resides here. That is one of the reasons the excavation took so long to start. The location is also significant to the native populations in the area. Should any tribal relics be discovered, a monitor representing the northern Chumash looked over the excavation. There was an incredible feeling of urgency there when I went in November. Rain was expected over the next three days, which would probably permanently ruin the Sphinx. Colleen Hamilton, the project's principal archaeologist, stated, Now is the time to do whatever that we can to salvage from the site. Doug Jansen, the executive director of the Dune Center, a conservation group that oversees the gorgeous Guadalipo Nipomo Dunes area, has had a 20 year ambition of recovering the Sphinx. Depending on the light, the four square mile stretch of reddish sands evoke images of either ancient Egypt or Arrakis, the desert planet from Frank Herbert's novel Dune. Jansen fought for five years to get the excavation's money and permissions. The 37-year-old scampered about the open hole here in a state of frenetic delight as the project approached completion. He added, watching one of the researchers delicately remove sand off the Sphinx's serrated headpiece, it's both thrilling and terrible. It's debatable if anything that isn't nearly a century old qualifies as noteworthy. The hub of man-made fiction that emerged from a virtual wasteland in the first part of the 20th century is Hollywood, after all. One of its imposing figures was DeMille. For Californians, this qualifies as deep history, even though the director's sphinx may not have the same weight as, say, a mystery vacuum inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. It took more than 1,300 employees, 3,000 animals, 50,000 feet of timber, 25,000 pounds of nails, and 250 tons of plaster to construct the set. Only a pharaoh would dare try anything like that. Given the significance of the film industry to the state, pointing out that it was designed to be transitory seems trivial. It's a big discovery, says Jansen. Nowhere else in the world is there anything like it. Why DeMille chose to bury the set at all is one of the lingering puzzles in this situation. There are two explanations, according to Jansen. The first is that DeMille, in classic Hollywood fashion, had overspent his budget so much that he was unable to pay to disassemble the set and load it onto rail carriages to transport it back to LA. The second reason is that DeMille, a perfectionist who obsesses over even the slightest details, didn't want another filmmaker to utilize the set secretly for a different, more subpar project. Before CGI enabled the production of whole planets on silicone, repurposing sets and sometimes outright appropriation of them was frequent. 
Because so few people were aware that it had been buried, the set was regarded as lost in Hollywood circles. Of course, the locals were aware of its presence. In 1983, when director Peter Bronson was reading Cecil D. Bamil's autobiography, he came across the following passage. If 1,000 years from now, archaeologists happen to dig beneath the sands of Guadalupe, I hope they will not rush into print with the amazing news that Egyptian civilization extended all the way to the Pacific coast. To locate the buried set, Bronson set out. West of Santa Maria, the center of wine country, in the little community of Guadalupe in Santa Barbara County, he spoke with residents. He eventually came to a local who guided him up the inclining dunes, showing a little galaxy of debris scattered across the sands, including rusty nails and fragments of plaster. The county of Santa Barbara, which has control over the site, hindered Bronson's attempts to dig the region, and he documented the experience in the new docudrama The Lost City of DeMille. When Bronson finally secured consent and funding for excavation in 2012, his team uncovered a section of a sphinx and went out to get the remainder, believing that it would make the ideal finale to their movie if they were able to find the whole of it. Unfortunately, the sphinx that they found was in poor condition, and when they tried to remove it, it shattered to pieces in their hands. Despite this, the elimination makes for a suspenseful and exciting finale to the film. The restoration of the Sphinx is by no means complete, despite the fact that it is now being shown at the Dunes Center. Jensen reasoned that there may be another Sphinx that was even more comprehensive elsewhere in the world. A second Sphinx was discovered by his crew the previous year, and it was just a few yards away from the first one. A significant number of archaeologists who are participating in the excavation of the second Sphinx were also members of the previous team. They are using a specialized yellow spray foam that adheres to the inside borders of the second sphinx and offers support in order to stop the same thing from happening as it did with the first sphinx. When additional sand is removed, revealing the creature's other side of the skull as well as a big paw, the crew's excitement is clear for everyone to see. On the 11th and last day of the dig, the team carefully places the massive head of the sphinx onto a homemade sled constructed of wood and old surfboards. Six different people have to work together to get the head out of the hole. Its belly, which has been underwater for a lot of years, at a depth of about 10 feet, is still painted ochre, and in the late afternoon light, it glows a persimmon color. A few months from now, visitors to the Dune Center will be able to see the freshly repaired Sphinx. Jensen is of the opinion that movie sets from the golden age of Hollywood simply do not exist anymore. This is an opportunity to save a piece of American history from being destroyed, so seize it while you can. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope that you like this video, and if you do, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we upload our next video.